Hey everybody, how you doing? It is good to be with you once again. Here to show you some records and babble. <laughs> um, last weekend it was Record Store Day and I didn't really buy anything for Record Store Day. I had some money set aside for it. I was waiting for it and then life kicked in and I had to use, i.e. car trouble. <laughs> And uh, the money I set aside for hopefully buying records, I had to fix my car because that was a higher priority, you know, getting to work and such. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I didn't uh, get anything for Record Store Day. I still listened to records later that day, but <laughs> but not exactly, um, not, not exactly uh, visiting record stores on that day. But, you know what, Record Store Day is basically supporting independent record stores. Uh, I do that throughout the year, uh, maybe once a month or maybe once a couple months, I'll go to some of my favorite indie record stores and see what they got and buy some things. So I don't wait for record store day to do that. So I never really, it's to me, it's not a big deal if I miss record store day. There were some things I was interested in that I wanted to see if I could find, but you know, life life got in the way and I had to take care of some business, let's put it that way. So, no Record Store Day uh, finds to show in this video, but I do have some, a little bit of vinyl I did want to show, so let's just get started with that. Now, this is an album I've always wanted on vinyl and it was never available. And now, for the first time ever, it is available on vinyl and I could not be happier. It's from Garbage, it's the album Bleed Like Me. I've had this on CD for so many years and as much as I love my CD, I love this way more because <laughs> it sounds so much better. Number one, it's remastered. It's remastered for vinyl and it sounds so good. So good. It, this is probably one of my favorite um, garbage albums besides the first two that they released. Because the first two I think are great, but uh, this one is really good and I think underrated. Um, Bad Boyfriend, Run Baby Run, Right Between the Eyes, Why Do You Love Me, Bleed Like Me, Metal Heart, and that's just side one. Um, Sex is Not the Enemy, It's All Over But the Crying, Boys Want to Fight, that's an okay song. Uh, Why Don't You Come Over, another okay song. And then what ends the record is Happy Home, which is one of my favorite songs on this album. So this is a two record set and the second album is just you know, B-sides and songs that didn't make the cut, <laughs> some demos, um, a real cool collection and the all the B-side stuff and the rarities, they're all good songs as well, just to let you see what the some of the song titles are for those. Uh, so I've only listened to the second disc one time, but I've listened to the first disc, the actual album, about five or six times. <laughs> but, you know, the rarities and the B-sides and all that, they're really good. And I have to get around to listen to it again, but I'm just so stoked that one of my favorite garbage albums is now on vinyl. And I can listen to it on my turntable. That just makes me so happy. So happy. Okay, so this... This is the uh, Inside Slave, it just shows, gives you all the lyrics, and it is on red vinyl, and look at that. So cool, so cool, so cool. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Um, I think after this album was released and the band toured and promoted this album on the road, and here's all the credits and the thank yous and whatnot. And some more lyrics, again, just like the first record. Looks exactly like it. Okay, after the band toured this album, um, they pretty much went their separate ways, and it looked like garbage might have might be no more. And it would be quite a number of years before they would make another record after this. Uh, quite a few years, I think. Uh, the, the lead singer, Shirley Manson, she actually uh, started a television show right after this tour ended and did that for uh, a year or a couple of years 
and supposedly was going to put out a solo album of hers, but it never saw the light of day. And then the, eventually the band got back together, released another album, and went on the road again as garbage. And they've been pretty constant since then. So, and it's great to see that they finally re-released this. Oh, this this makes me happy. This makes me happy. And uh, when I brought it here and listened to it for the first time, that remix really pounded. Bad Boyfriend this is the first track, and it has a real deep, punchy sound to it, and um, kind of a hard rock blues, but pop. <laughs> it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe the sound sometimes, but that. You could tell when that song came on. You could tell, oh, this is this is a remaster, and it's a damn good one too, because this thing is just pounding its way out of the speakers. It sounds great, it sounds so good, and uh, I am so happy to have this album finally on vinyl. It feels so good. I used to go on to the Garbage Official Facebook and Instagram page, and anytime they would release, a, they would post a video from this album. I'd be in there with, with hundreds of others like, will you please put this on vinyl? We'll buy it. We'll buy two if we have to. And um, they finally did. They finally listened to the fans and here we are. Oh my God. Like I said, this makes me happy. One of my, uh, I, I don't have a very big stack of records because I've been listening to this nonstop. <laughs> so garbage will be like me. Finally out on vinyl for the first time. And it's also on black vinyl. But um, I wanted to get the special red vinyl because um, my love for this album. I wanted something special. All right, we're going to show another band that starts with G. And they are also very special to me as well. And it's been a long time since I've shown any of their vinyl here on one of my videos. So it's nice to finally show them again. And that band is Genesis. This is a bootleg. It came out recently. It is from the Invisible Touch Tour. This compilation is called LA Complete. The full 1986 broadcast, FM broadcast. And it comes in volume one. And it comes in volume two. And both are uh, two record sets. So four albums all together. Um, the full Abicab show at the LA Forum in 1986. No, I went to, I went to, this is real special for me because I saw Genesis Live in 1986 and this was recorded in October of 86, which I think was a week after I saw them in Oakland. Then, and this is of course from Los Angeles, these albums were recorded from, from their Los Angeles concerts. And I saw them in Oakland a week before they went to LA, so this is right around the this is like a week later after I saw them in Oakland, so so that's why this this volume, the, 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 these two record sets mean so much to me. And I'll show you volume one here. Uh, cool picture from 1986. There's the back. It's just the, the track listing. And there's the gatefold. Nice picture of the band there. Yeah, real nice, real nice. This is an FM broadcast. So the sound quality is very good. I mean, very good. It practically sounds like an official live recording. <laughs> it does. Except for one thing, uh, because it's a radio recording, they leave all the all the mistakes and sour notes and train wrecks on the disc. So you get, you, this is a complete live show. Even the train wrecks were included in this. And one train wreck in com in particular, it was during the song Domino. Yeah, it, it, it a two, that, that song is a two-parter. You know, there's the serious side and then the, the serious driving uh, dramatic song, which is called In the Glow of the Night. Then it, go, then it goes to part two, which is called The Last Domino. And it kind of has this galloping kind of rhythm. <laughs> While that rhythm's going, Tony Banks, the keyboard player in this band, he usually comes in with some real dramatic, industrial, psychedelic sounding keyboard effect sounds. And he starts to do that, and then all of a sudden the keyboards just die. <laughs> so there was some mechanical failure. So the band is keeping that galloping rhythm going for a lot longer than they normally would. And I guess 
Tony Banks is doing the best he can to get his rig back up again so he can play the parts so it could sound like the record. Uh, but he just couldn't, I guess, whatever mechanical difficulty they were having during this time, they couldn't get it back up right away. <clears throat> so they did the best. Phil started singing the lyrics. And they did the best they could to sing the song without the keyboards for about a minute or a minute and a half. And that first minute and a half is very keyboard heavy, so it sounds almost naked without the keyboards. <laughs> Until eventually the keyboards, they get the rig up again and the, and the keyboards are back and then it sounds just like the record. But you get to hear that, that, that train wreck, <laughs> pretty much. And um, that's when you know it's 100% live. There's no backing tracks to Genesis. It's a 100% live experience. No backing tracks. Just like they used to in the old days. Unfortunately, they don't do it like that these days. <laughs> and it's on black vinyl. And uh, the cover picture is on the A side. And then the B side is just the track listing. <clears throat> and that's what all the all four records look like. So I'll just show you that one. And uh, it's a little confusing when you try to grab this because it has the same... Volume 2 has the exact, in fact, here's Volume 2, it has the same picture on the front, it has the same picture on the gatefold, it even has the same story pr uh, printed here on as it does on Volume 1. So Volume 1 and Volume 2 have this exact same story here, and this almost looks identical to me. Of course, the only way you can tell is by looking at the song list here, but, you know, <laughs> we have Genesis and gold lettering for volume one and the gray lettering for volume two and of course the track listing that's the only way you can really tell these two apart <laughs> other than that they're completely identical it seems like but anyway like I said this is around the first time I saw Genesis and this blew my mind absolutely blew my mind and the, the biggest reason I wanted this besides you know for memory sakes uh, is the uh, 70s medley. They do a medley of their 70s songs on here, on the B-side of Volume 2, <clears throat> which is In the Cage, In That Quiet Earth, and S Supper's Ready. And that's just those, that medley alone is about 20 minutes long. And I remember when I saw that in Oakland, that just blew my mind. It, it actually blew me away, melted my face off, whatever you want to say. It 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 it, it changed my life. I have to say, it changed my life because I saw Phil Collins a year before that for the No Jacket Required tour, and that made me want to become a drummer. Then fast forward almost a year and a half later, see Genesis in Oakland during this tour. <clears throat> it made me want to be in a band. It made me want to. It, it opened my eyes to prog, progressive rock music, and then I just would follow it to crazy lengths. <laughs> And it turned me into a big Genesis junkie and Phil Collins junkie. So, so um, it, it's one of the best in concert experiences I've ever had, as seeing Genesis in Oakland, 1986. So that's what makes having this in my collection so special for me. And like I said, it's the whole concert, even the annoying medley at the end of the show for Turn It On Again, where they do all the oldies medleys mixed in with Turn It On Again, which which annoys the hell of a lot of Genesis fans, but hey, they were just trying to be fun and entertaining. And it was the last song of the uh, concert. So anyway, <clears throat> a great collection here. Like I said, the sound quality is really good. It, uh, it pretty much sounds like an official live recording uh, from Genesis. It sounds really great. It captures when the band was really strong in the 80s and really popular, the height of their popularity. And it's just a good, it's just a, for a genius, for a big Genesis fan like me, it's a must have. <laughs> That's all there is. Um, of course, if you're into the 70s Genesis, really, uh, the, the 70s medley is probably the only thing you'll be interested in. The rest, you probably couldn't care less. Though the, the, they do have a good version of Los Santos on there. And speaking of Genesis, I actually got this. Daryl Sturmer's solo album from 1987, I believe. And it's called Stepping Out, and um, he is the touring guitarist for Genesis, 
Uh, I think he started playing with Genesis in 1978, all the way to the last Genesis tour, which was like a year and a half or two years ago. So he's been with Genesis for a long time. Also, he's with Phil Collins on his solo albums, on his solo tours. So a very important member, or non-member, I should say, of, of Genesis, because he never played on any of the records or albums. He was only just a touring musician for Genesis, but such a great guitarist. And this is just an instrumental rock fusion album. Uh, he has one Phil Collins song on here, which is I Don't Want to Know, an instrumental version of it. Uh, that song was from the uh, No Jacket Required album. But it was a song that was co-written by Daryl Sturmer and Phil Collins, so now it appears on his solo record. This is a really good album. I just bought it because, you know, I'm a big Genesis fan. I like the way he plays guitar. He plays the Steve Hackett stuff really good, in my opinion. And... Um, he, he seems like a really good musician. He's, he's, he's very jazz influenced and um, so I, it made me curious to buy this and I'm glad I did because I actually really enjoy this record. Uh, this is a gold stamp promo. So it's an early pressing of the album. I'll show you the vinyl sleeve here. It has a nice little um, forward written by Phil Collins. In fact, you can see his little doodle there. And it's pretty fun. It's a pretty funny read, so <laughs> pretty humorous. So, and then of course another picture of Daryl, and all the credits. And there is the record, white label promo. And like I said, very good album. So glad I picked it up. I actually enjoy this. I like the sound mix on it. I think that's what I enjoy. I mean, the music's really good, but the sound mix is pretty cool considering it's somewhat of an older record, late '80s. But it sounds fantastic on my stereo. His playing is really good. I've always liked the way he plays guitar. Uh, reminds me of Eric Johnson. I mean, he has his own style, of course. I don't say he sounds just like Eric Johnson, but it does remind me of his style. So he's a real good guitarist. I'm glad I picked up his solo record. <clears throat> All right, I want to show this. Because um, this is pretty interesting. Uh, earlier this month, the band ABBA celebrated its 50th anniversary of winning the Eurovision Song Contest with their song Waterloo that happened 50 years ago uh, in the beginning of April. So they put out a couple of pieces to commemorate that. This is the 10 inch single that commemorates the 50th anniversary. And it even has that 50th anniversary sticker. Uh, so a 10 inch single for the song Waterloo. Oh, actually I should show that side. <laughs> it actually says 50th anniversary. Uh, like I said, for the song Waterloo. So on the B, on the A side, on the A side we have the English version of Waterloo and the Swedish version. Flip it over to side two, we got the German and French version of Waterloo. And it's on the uh, Polar label, 10 inch single. And of course there's the 50th anniversary label. Really cool stuff. Um, I gotta hand it to those ladies in ABBA, and they can sing in English, Swedish, obviously, because they're from Sweden, but also, you know, German, French, and they can also sing in Spanish. In fact, in, during the early 80s, ABBA actually put out an album of a collection of their songs sung in Spanish, so the ladies had to learn to sing in Spanish. Uh, that, to me, is very impressive. It shows you how talented they are, how intelligent they are, <laughs> that they can sing in all these different languages. I mean, i, I got to give them kudos for that. And <clears throat> there is, like I said, the, the, that album is, that Spanish uh, album is out there of, of ABBA songs sung by the ladies in Spanish. Uh, it's a full album. I think it's about a good seven or eight songs they did in Spanish. And never seen in a store, but I bet if I do... It'll be expensive because it's probably out of print. <laughs> but anyway, getting sidetracked here. Uh, really cool to celebrate the 50th anniversary of them winning the Eurovision Song Contest with Waterloo. And um, a collection of singles, a whole box set of singles from the Waterloo album. <clears throat> so record one is 
the song Waterloo done in Swedish and back with the song Honey Honey also in Swedish and uh, record two is the English version of Waterloo backed with the song Watch Out record three Honey Honey in English backed with the song King Kong song which was one of the most silliest songs ABBA ever put out <laughs> And here's my beef with this. Okay, here's one of the records. This is for Honey Honey. And a nice photo of them from back in 1974. So really nice. And the back is just the adver old advertisements from back in the day. And what color is this album? I mean, this record. It's a 45. So it's on red vinyl on the Polar label. And now here's the other two. And this is... It's a, it's a slight complaint. Maybe I'm being picky here, but here's the other two records to go with the cover of the 10-inch single. This I don't like. <laughs> I think they could have found more older photos from 74 like they did this record, and I thought that would have looked better than just seeing this tired <laughs> cover over and over again. See it twice here. See it on the 10-inch single. It's like, come on, guys. You, let's Let's... Let's find some artwork, can we? But this record is on white vinyl. This is the Honey Honey record. Like I said, no, it's Waterloo backed with Honey Honey. English version of both. And then this one is also Waterloo backed with. <laughs> Watch out. Did I read that wrong? Honey Honey, Waterloo. Okay, yeah, okay. And this one is on blue vinyl. So there we go, blue, white, red. So really cool. So this is, so now I don't know what version I have here. <laughs> let me just, let me just take a gander here. I believe this one is the English version. Yeah, this is the English version of Waterloo. So I, I take it, this is the Swedish version. So English version of Waterloo, backed with wa the song Watch Out. And Swedish version of Waterloo, back with the song Honey Honey, both sung in uh, Swedish. So, <clears throat> all right, so there we go. That's now that we got that clear. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, this I wish they had found a more pe period photo like this one besides seeing this twice, but I guess that's just my sour grapes there. But I do like the box, so I always like the way. I always like the way they put these box these box sets together. It looks nice. And I, and I think this one's limited, yeah. I have number 851 out of um, 2800. So they're numbered. So that's cool. Hopefully that can be seen. There we go. So real cool to have that to celebrate the band's 50th anniversary. All right, last up, something classic rock. Why not? I could have got this any place but I, I, I was on a trip in LA and picked this up at a record store because I just thought it looked cool <laughs> it's the uh, farewell tour album for the Doobie Brothers you know I'm a big it's one of those things you know they're, they're one of those bands to me like you don't realize how many songs of theirs you like until you see like a greatest of compilation or in this case the live record they had so many hits <laughs> and I, I, I remember loving this band when I was a kid, back in the 70s, in early 80s, very early 80s, and I gotta be like, I gotta be honest, like all the kids my age and in the hood here, the first time I even heard of this band is when they were on the TV show What's Happening, <laughs> and I thought they were cool as hell, and that was probably one of my favorite episodes of What's Happening was when the Doobie Brothers were on it. And I was a Doobie Brothers fan after that. Uh, I really didn't know much about the band before that. <laughs> and it comes with the original inserts of photography of life on the road. Very nice, nice photo collage of all kinds of stuff. I think this is on the Warner Brothers label. Yeah, Warner Brothers label. But <clears throat> this was the first of many Farewell tours. <laughs> they may still be touring. I don't really know. Uh, but I know after this, they got back together in the, er, the late 80s. 
or so, 86, 87, put out another record. <clears throat> and they were touring ever since then. So, so much for a farewell. It was the first farewell concert. This is record two. And, um, of course, same label, so nothing, nothing new there. But, um, yeah, uh, I've never seen them live before. I've seen them live on television, but never in person. Uh, but, you know, listening to classic rock radio all day at work, I hear a lot of their songs every day. <laughs> so I, I, it's kind of one of those things like, yeah, hey, it would be cool to see them live, but um, I hear their songs so many times a day, I, I don't really see it as something I must see. But I do respect this band. They, they have some great songs. They're great musicians. This was a tight band, and this, this live record really shows how tight of a band they were. They sent a great live. <laughs> this was a really good live band. And, um, you know, me being a drummer, there was two drummers in this band. Or sometimes one would play drums, one would play percussion. Uh, and the drums and percussion arrangement is usually pretty cool to listen to. And there were good guitar players in this band, too. So this band can tear it up live. And this, this is a good example of, of that. This is a fun listen. I love this. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's it for this quick showing of records. Like I said, uh, on the 20th, I didn't get to partake in record store day because I had to get my car fixed. <laughs> but, you know, to cheer me up on the 20th, on record store day, my band played a gig uh, in Lodi, California. Stuck in Lodi. And uh, we, we uh, premiered our music video at the show. And we bought a big screen, a digital projector, we waited till the sun went down because it was an outdoor gig on the pad on a patio area and we premiered the video in the middle of our set we stopped playing and it's like watching a drive-in movie practically <clears throat> to to uh, uh, all the fans and people that came to see the show that night and it was a lot of fun it's a real silly video <laughs> it, it's about a duo i'll give you a, a spoiler it's it's the it's the duo it features the duo of jesus and Sasquatch. <laughs> and if you listen to the lyrics, you'll see how those two relate to each other. So if you're interested in watching my band's video, I'll put the link in the description so you can hit the link and watch it and let me know what you think of it. Uh, the song is called uh, you, you Gotta Believe, Baby. And uh, my band is called Radical Times. I play the drums in it. And some of the backup vocals. I play. I actually sing backup vocals in this song, but it's nothing to brag about. <laughs> the vocals, that is, my backup vocals. But it, it's a fun video. It's a fun, silly video, and I really love the song. The song came from a, a jam we did, and we just kind of kept the best parts of the jam, and then worked on it to we to we eventually had a song, and went to the studio, a, a professional studio, recorded it along with five other songs, and. Now we have a brand new video, so so that's how I spent my record store day. I actually premiered new music and new video to people, to the world. So instead of buying records, I put my own music out there. So there you go. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to do it here. Uh, leave me a comment. Let's talk about the records I showed. And if you want to watch the video, we can talk about that too. Right, anyways, hope everyone's doing good, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.